friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to sit down and do a speed reviews type of video. I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts on all the products that I picked up at the most recent Sephora sale. I know that was back in like the end of November, early December, and I picked up quite a few products that I have been testing over the last couple of months. And I finally have my final thoughts that I want to share with you guys on them. Before we get started, if you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And other than that, if you're excited and you want to hear my updated thoughts on the products that I bought in the most recent Sephora sale, let's go ahead and get started. First, I did want to give a huge thank you to Dossier Perfumes for partnering with me on this portion of today's video. I've worked with Dossier in the past and I really, really genuinely like their perfumes a lot. So I'm always excited when I'm able to actually work with them again. I have been sent perfumes from them and I've also bought them with my own money. That is how much I just really love their scents. If you've not heard of Dossier, they are a perfume company who replicates more expensive perfumes. So you're able to try out different scents that won't break the bank. It says that their mission is to deliver the highest quality luxury inspired fragrances at at a fair price, giving you the freedom to explore new scents, which I really love that because perfume's expensive, but I love trying new perfumes. I love wearing a new one each day, but I don't have the funds to always go out and be buying like $100, $150 perfumes left and right whenever I want to try them out. So they did send over a couple more scents for me to talk to you about and try out. The first one being a Fruity Brown Sugar. This one is supposed to be inspired by the YSL Mon Perry perfume. This one retails for $29 and the YSL one retails for $100. So obviously you're getting a lot better of a deal when you are picking up the Dossier one. And in from my past experiences, all the perfumes that I've had the same ones as like Dossier version, as well as the other brands version at the same time, they smell exactly the same. But while I have not personally smelled or tried the Mon Perry version, I have a feeling it's gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and be popping up the notes on the screen of the two perfumes I'm talking about because I am not really that good at describing perfumes. So the notes will be here for you, but this just smells like fruity and sweet and really, really yummy. This is a really perfect perfume for this time of year. It's a nice transition from like winter into spring. Obviously, it's still January, so we're still definitely into winter, but it's a nice transition because it's like warm and like yummy, but still a little fruity at the same time. Oh, I really, really love this one. I think this smells delicious. And they also sent over Woody Oak Moss. So this one is supposed to be replicating the Chanel Coco Mademoiselle perfume. So this one also retails for $29 and the Coco Chanel one retails for $105. So again, you are getting quite a bit of savings using a dossier. Again, the notes will be popped up here on the screen. This one is way more fruitier than the last one, but I like that. I think this will be a beautiful perfume to use in the upcoming spring months. It's fruity and sweet and feminine. Oh, I am loving this as well. If you've never checked out Dossier, I will definitely have their link in the top of my description box for you guys to possibly check out. They have women's scents, they have men's scents, and they also have unisex scents. So you can kind of get anything that you want. Another really nice aspect about Dossier is if you purchase a perfume from them and you end up not loving it on you or how it wears on you, because obviously perfume smells different on everyone and it's gonna wear different on everyone, you can return it no questions asked, which I think is amazing. So thank you again to Dossier for parting with me on this portion of today's video. Again, all the information on their website and anything like that will be at the top of my description box for you guys to check out. So let's get into these speed reviews. I am gonna try my best to make these actually speedy. I know I tend to just talk and talk and the next thing I know this video is gonna be like a half an hour long and I do not want that. It's called speed reviews for a reason. Really quickly though, if you are curious about this look, my eye look, anything like that, I am wearing the Blend Bunnies All Done Up palette and I am currently in the process of filming a one week one palette on it and this is one of the days. So this look will be coming soon in a video so keep your eyes out for that. I'm not really gonna go in any particular order. Two of these I did purchase after the sale, but they are still from Sephora. So I figured I would just throw them in here and kind of talk to you about them at the same time. So I'm just gonna kind of like pick and grab and go because we got quite a few products to talk about. The first one is the Huda Beauty Glow Wish Blur Jam Silicone Free Smoothing Primer. Okay. I don't love this, I don't hate this. What I do like about it though, is that it is a silicone free smoothing primer. I just think it's nice as silicone free. It'll help not clog your pores. And I also enjoy that it doesn't pill. I've had like, pore filling primers in the past where you have to be really careful about the amount that you apply on your face because it'll pill. This one doesn't seem to do that. It has a really interesting texture. It really does just sink into the skin nicely. However, I don't really notice it doing much of a pore fill 
personally. Does it do a little something something? Yeah, probably, but I don't notice like super smooth skin and I actually still do see my pores peeking through when I use this. Obviously I have pores, so like it's not gonna be a miracle. I know a lot of other people really enjoy this and do find it super pore filling, so kind of take my review with a grain of salt and maybe try it out for yourself. I didn't do the disclaimer at the beginning of this video, but you guys know it's coming. If these are some of your favorite products and you love them and I ended up not liking them or vice versa, makeup is different for everyone. Please don't get offended if I like something you don't or don't like something that you do. Next up, we have the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. And this I picked up the shade 4N. I'm not entirely sure why I did that because it definitely is a little bit dark on me. I will say though, I feel like it blends out a lot lighter than when you first apply it. When I put it on my under eyes, it looks a little bit deep and a little bit too yellow like it does right here in the swatch, but it does seem to blend out lighter when I blended it with my sponge. I don't really understand that, but that's something to keep in mind if you want to purchase this concealer, but I also haven't really heard anyone else saying that. So I don't know if that's just like a me thing and what it does on my skin. Kind of like the Blur Jam, I don't really love this. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It is the concealer I have on my under eyes today. And if you can see, it's getting pretty creasy on me. And I went ahead and set it with my Laura Mercier under eye brightening powder that I love that powder. I use it all the time. It is a beautiful under eye setting powder. And this just seems to get really creasy on me. Also doesn't provide the best amount of coverage. I don't think it claims to be a full coverage concealer. So there's that, but I personally have some bags that I want to cover up a little bit more than I feel like this provides for me. And the packaging is just a little bit bulky. It's just short and thick. It's kind of hard to fit into my concealer drawer. And if you can see, a lot of concealer gets like stuck up here at the top as you're putting the doe foot in and out. So while this isn't the worst concealer I've ever tried and it's not drying, which is nice, I tend to struggle with concealers being dry on my under eyes. This doesn't do that. I just don't think it provides enough coverage and I just don't love how it wears. It gets kind of creasy on me, unfortunately. Okay, let's be a little bit more positive and move on to something that I absolutely do love and I'm so glad I picked up in the sale. I've talked about this product quite a few times in past videos, so this isn't going to be a shock, but it is the Gucci Luminous Bronzer. This baby is expensive, okay? I am by no means telling you to go out and purchase a Gucci bronzer because you do not need it in your life. You truly don't, especially for the price. I did get the 20% off during the sale, but this bronzer is absolutely stunning. The packaging, the formula, everything about it, I'm in love, which thank goodness, because I did spend so much money on it. This is the shade 01, which is the lightest one that it comes in. I believe there's three or four other shades. It's the bronzer I have on my face today. Luminous Bronzer is a perfect name for it. It gives you just a really healthy sheen and glow to your skin. I don't know if you're really going to be able to tell. This lighting's awful. It's really dark and gray outside. I'm sorry about that. But it really does give your skin a nice luminous glow without being glittery. There's no glitters in it at all. It just makes you look healthy and glowy. The tone is beautiful on my fair skin. It blends in like a dream. It does not fade all day long, does not get patchy. Everything about this. I love it so stinking much. <laughs> Another product I've been enjoying is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So in this, I picked up the shade 2.5. Definitely not a good shade match for me. It's not terrible, I can make it work. But I feel like this shade range is a little bit wonky. A lot of them tend to pull orange slash yellow. So be a little bit careful when you are trying to find your shade maybe online. I even picked this up in person and I still kind of struggled to find a shade. I had to ask one of the workers to help shade match me and it still isn't that good of a shade match. It is the foundation I have on my face today, but I did go ahead and mix in the Purito Sika Clearing BB Cream into it. I mix that into like every single foundation I use, but I feel like it helps color correct it a little bit and makes it a little less yellowy. This is a product that's a little bit finicky for me in the sense that when I first apply it to my face, I don't love how it looks. I feel like it takes a while to blend in and it doesn't really super mesh with my skin at first. However, this wears so beautifully on the skin. I filmed a video before work last week and when I was taking my makeup off at the end of the night, I couldn't remember what foundation I had on, but I remember like looking in the mirror thinking, man, my makeup still looks amazing. And it's been like 10 hours at this point. And whenever I film a video, I always take a picture of my makeup, everything I use. So that way I can link it down below for you guys and I don't forget what I wore. And it was this foundation. It just looks so beautiful all throughout the day. It does not get cakey, it does not get greasy. 
It doesn't fade away or break up on my chin. And it's almost one of those formulas that get better throughout the day. It just meshes with your skin and gets better. So this is beautiful. I have really, really been enjoying this. Sadly though, a foundation I have not been liking is this one from House Labs. This is their Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. And this I picked up the shade 50 Fair Cool. Again, not the best shade match for me. Again, another pretty wonky shade range. I don't know what's up with these brands coming out with these shade ranges recently. The Hourglass one, this one, the new Makeup by Mario one. I don't, I don't know what's going on with the high-end shade ranges, but this isn't the most terrible foundation I've ever tried. I just don't personally like it on my skin. I don't think it provides enough coverage for me and it doesn't layer up that great. Whenever I put on a layer, I can still see a bunch of my redness and acne scars peeking through. So then I put on a second layer. It doesn't really build up that much and then it gets cakey and drying on my skin when I build it up. It is one that wears really nicely throughout the day though. When I do wear it, I don't feel like it gets oily or greasy. It doesn't really break up. Like it pretty much stays looking the same throughout the day. I just don't love the way it looks. But if you have a little bit less to cover than me, I think you might like this. It definitely is a medium sort of coverage. And I do know a lot of people who love this foundation. It's just for me, I don't know. I'm just not vibing with this, sadly. In conjunction with that, I also picked up the House Labs Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. Out of the two products, I definitely like this more, but still not my favorite setting powder, not going to lie. One of the main things I don't like about it is the packaging. I just personally don't like these mesh nets whenever they are on like loose powders like this because I'm someone who likes to pretty heavily set the face. And whenever there's a net like this, it's always really hard to get out the amount of powder that I like to use. If you like to really lightly set your face and you don't like to use a lot of powder, you might really enjoy that, but I'll probably end up cutting this out I also feel like there's not a ton of product in here, which is a little bit of a bummer. I did use this today to set my face over the Hourglass Foundation, and I definitely like it a lot better over that than the House Labs Foundation, which is funny because you would think that they are meant to go together, but over the House Labs Foundation, I find this to be very drying, and when I used it today, it was less drying. It is pretty blurring though, so I will give it that. It definitely blurred like my pores and my T-zone and all that, so I did enjoy that. But it's definitely not the worst powder out there, but then it's also like $38. So definitely keep that in mind. It's not the cheapest powder. There are a ton of powders that I like at the same price point or a lot more affordable that work better for my skin. Next up, we have the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. I like this. There's really only one thing that I don't like about it, and it is the fact that it doesn't fully blank out my lid. It has a little bit more of a skin tone color, so you would think that it would completely blank out my lid, but whenever I go to blend this in with the brush that I always blend in my eye primers with, it just kind of, it doesn't disappear. Like it sets down and, it, it, and it's an eye primer, but it just doesn't cover up all my veins and discoloration that I prefer in an eye primer. However, it's a really nice formulation. I feel like it does help my eyeshadows last a little bit longer. It's not drying on my eyelids, which I do feel like I struggle with quite a bit. Eye primer is looking a little bit drying and almost flaky on my lids. And I do, like I said, think it helps with longevity and all of that. The packaging is cute. It's nice and compact. It blends in nicely. And it's also pretty affordable for Sephora. I don't think it's gonna be a repurchase when I completely use it up, but I can see myself completely using this up. Sticking with Rare Beauty, I did also pick up one of their highlighters. These have gone like super viral apparently. I think on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok so I don't know but a lot of people are posting about these on Instagram as well as YouTube. So this is their uh just this is highlighter. I don't really know the exact name of it but I picked up the shade Enlighten which is the lightest one that it comes in. If you want the most blinding highlighter pretty much of your life this is it. This is I, I think this is my most blinding highlighter in my collection. I did pick up the lightest shade, like I said, and I do know there are some other ones that probably wouldn't be so icy on my skin, but like, look at that. It, that is so reflective, but what I like about it is that it's reflective without emphasizing pores or texture on your face. It is the highlight that I have on my face today. I have to be really careful to go in with only a little bit and tap off my brush, because if not, like, it can get really, really intense. Like, super intense, which I don't always want a super intense highlight, but like I said, you can sheer it out a little bit if that is the look you're going for. This as an inner corner and brow bone highlight is absolutely stunning as well. It's almost rivaling my um, ColourPop Flexitarian, which you guys know is like always my go-to inner corner highlight. And this one is like just as blinding, but without being the like putty sort of texture, it is like a powder, 
but even though it's a powder, it just goes on your skin really nicely and isn't like dry cakey, anything like that. These are beautiful. I kind of want to pick up another shade, maybe two. I don't think I'm going to. I don't need more highlight, but I've absolutely been loving this and I definitely understand why it's gone viral. And I want to say it's only $25, which I know is kind of a lot for like one single highlighter, but I personally think it's worth it and I think it's stunning. This next product, I was a little bit late to the game. I'm not going to lie. These went pretty viral last year sometime. I'm pretty sure all the shades sold out at one point. They had to get restocked. I just never thought it would be a product that I would enjoy. And then on a whim, I picked one up and I have been loving it. So stinking much. And it is Makeup by Mario. This is his Plumping Lip Serum. I went ahead and picked up the shade Pink Glow. This is the most stunning lip product. It is not the one I have on my lips today. That's something I'm going to talk about in a minute. But this makes my lips look so thick and juicy and shiny. It makes it look like I got lip filler, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm not someone who likes a plumping sort of lip product. I don't like that feeling on my lips, the like burning cinnamon tingling sort of sensation. I don't like that. I try to stay away from products like that, which is why I never picked this up. But then I just, I don't know, I kept hearing so many good things about it. And then this pink glow shade just looks so beautiful to me. So I did obviously pick it up and tried it. And it is just so juicy and shiny without being unpleasant and uncomfortable when you're wearing it. When I put this on, it does give me a little bit of that tingling sensa sensation, but it's more mint than like spicy, burning, hurting sort of feeling. And that I can get down with and I can like handle. The one thing I don't like about it is that it is super, super emollient. So it gets a little messy. If you can see like around the cap, it just kind of all like is oozing over the side. That is literally my only negative about this product. Everything else, I just think it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. And I'm telling you, I've never had something make my lips look so plump and juicy. I definitely want to pick up more shades. Then we have one that was a little bit of a disappointment to me. I like it. I'm going to use it, but I expected to like it more. And it's from Kaja Beauty. This is their Beauty Bento Trio in the shade Chocolate Dahlia. So the first main matte shade, the like lighter shade, I think it's beautiful and stunning. It blends in like a dream. It goes on my eyes nicely. It doesn't like patch, fade away, anything like that. Then we have this deeper matte here at the bottom. I've used it one time on my outer corner and up into the crease. And by the end of the day, it completely fluffed away and kind of disappeared. So how I've been using it since then is just going in with both of these mattes into the crease and then just putting the shimmer all over the lid. The shimmer is super shiny and impactful and like really, really pretty. But I will say, even whenever I use glitter glue with it, this still gives me quite a bit of fallout on my face throughout the day. It just kind of like slowly over the day just like rains down glitter on my face and I have it all over my cheeks. So I don't enjoy that. I mean, is it the end of the world to have a little bit of glitter fallout? No, but I just, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to be as bummed by this as I am with those two shades kind of not being my favorite, the deeper matte and the shimmer. But I will say I do reach for this for work. It's nice and easy and simple. I like how compact it is. I like how I don't have to really think about an eye look with it. I know exactly what to do with it because there's only three shades and it does look pretty on the eyes. Like I will give it that. I just was expecting to like it more than I do. Last two products are a couple goodies from Natasha Denona. The first one being the Retro Glam Palette. So the second I saw this kind of be like leaked, I knew I was going to pick it up. I love the Glam Palette and I love the Mini Retro Palette from her so when she combined both of them I was like yeah definitely definitely picking this up I think the color story on this is beautiful is it going to be one that I reach for all the time every day no definitely not but when I do reach for it I really like the looks that I make I love that there's a bunch of variety in this you have the pinks you have the greens you have the more neutral shades you can mix them together you can use them separately it, like there's pretty endless possibilities of eye looks with this palette and when I've used it, I think the quality is really, really nice. Like I said, it's not going to be one I use all the time, but when I am in the mood for these type of colors, I'm going to reach for this. Let me know if you would be interested in a one week one palette on this. I don't feel like a lot of you guys picked this up, so I don't know if you actually would be, but if you are, I can make that happen for you. So please let me know down below in the comments. So yeah, quality wise, shade range wise, all of that, I really do like this. I just don't reach for it all of the time. And last but not least, we have the Natasha Denona. This is her My Dream lipstick in the shade Natasha. It is the lipstick that I have on my lips today. 
I love this. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the tone of it. I love the shade. I love the formulation. If you can tell, it's a little bit shiny and glossy looking without being like too shiny or glossy. It helps cover up the lines in my lips. I, like I said, I think this tone is really beautiful on my fair skin. And I think that this is the type of shade that would be pretty on a bunch of skin tones as well. So I, I already knew I love Natasha Denona lipsticks. I own like four, I think, other shades. And I also own the other Natasha. She like came out with two Natashas. They're not the same though. So if you already own the old Natasha um, shade, this is not the same. I think you would still like this. It's a little bit more mauve pink and definitely more shiny. The other one's more matte. So I've been loving this. This has been like living, these two products have been like living in my purse. I use them all the time. And they're good ones. I think if you had your eye on either one of them, you wouldn't be disappointed if you picked them up. And that was it, you guys. That was some speed reviews on my most recent products I picked up at the Sephora sale. I wanted to come back and give you my final thoughts on them now that I have been trying them for the past couple of months. Let me know down below in the comments if you have tried any of these and what your guys' thoughts are on them as well. Again, thank you to Dossier for partnering with me on today's video. I will have all the information down below for you guys to check out their perfumes. They smell so yummy and they will save you some coin. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.